as you may or may not know, I've been fairly obsessed with artificial intelligence over the last, I don't know, 18 months or so. And we solicited some questions from Twitter, and many people asked about this. Have you gone down this rabbit hole at all? Have you thought about AI much? And there was one question I saw here, which was, given your research on empathy, how should we program an AI with respect to it? So I actually hadn't taken seriously the AI worries. Um, and honestly, I'll be honest, I dismissed them as somewhat crackpot mm -hmm. and, until I listened to you talk about it. I think it was a TED Talk. Yeah, um, yeah. And, uh, and, and, then, and then, so thank you, that got me worried about yet something else. Oh, good. Um, and I, I found it fairly persuasive that there's an issue here we should be devoting a, a lot more thought to. Um, the question of putting empathy into machines, which is, is, um, is I think in some way morally fraught. Because um, if I'm right, that empathy leads to capricious and arbitrary decisions, then if we put empathy into computers or robots, we end up with capricious and arbitrary computers and robots. I think when people think about putting empathy into machines, they often think about it from a marketing point of view, such that a, 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 you know, a household robot or even a, an interface on a Mac computer that is somewhat empathic will, um, will be more pleasurable to interact with, more humanoid, more human-like, mm. and will get more pleasure uh, dealing with it. And that might be the case. I, I've actually heard a contrary view uh, from my friend David Pizarro, who points out that when dealing with a lot of uh, interactions, we actually don't want empathy. We want a sort of uh, cold-blooded interaction that we don't have to become emotionally invested in. We want professionalism. I think, I think yes. of, of our super intelligent AI, I think we want professionalism more than we want emotional contagion. You don't want, if, if you're anxious, and consulting your robot doctor, you don't want that anxiety mirrored back to you, right? You want you want as stately a physician as you ever met in in the living world, now embodied yes. in this machine. Yes. So I'm I'm very happy if I have a home blood pressure cuff, which just gives me the numbers and doesn't say, oh man, I feel terrible for you. This must be very upsetting. Like, Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Too. Dude, I'm, I'm holding back here. It's, yeah. it's, 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 you know, the machine starts to a little graphical tears trickle down the interface. I, I'm sure people involved in marketing these devices think that they're appealing. I think that David is right. And we're going to discover that for a lot of interfaces, we just want uh, a, a sort of an, an affect-free, emotion-free uh, interaction. And, um, and I think we find... Um, as I find, for instance, with, with uh, uh, interfaces where you have to call the airport or something, when it reassures me that, that it's worried about me and so on, I find it cloying and annoying and intrusive. I just want, I just want the data. Um, I, I want to I save my empathy for real people. Yeah, but I, I think the question goes to what will be normative on the side of the AI? So do we want AI, I guess let's leave consciousness aside for the moment. That's right. But do we want an AI that actually has more than just factual knowledge of our preferences? Insofar as it could emulate our emotional experience, could that give it capacities oh, I see. Yeah. that, that we, we want it to have so as to better conserve our interests? So here, here's what I would, here's my take on it. I think we want AI with compassion. I think we particularly want AI of compassion towards us. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not sure whether this came from you or somebody else, but somebody gave the following scenario for how the world will end. The world is going to end when someone programs a powerful computer that interfaces with other things um, to um, to get rid of spam on right. email. Yeah. And then the computer will promptly destroy the world as a suitable way to do this. Um, we want machines to be have a guard against doing that where they say, well, human life is valuable. Human flourishing and animal flourishing is valuable. So – if I want if I want AI that is involved in making significant decisions, I want it to have compassion. I don't, however, want it to have uh, empathy. I think empathy makes us it makes us, among other things, racist. Uh, the last thing in the world we need is racist AI. There's been some concern that we already have racist AI. Oh, have yes, you, have I, you heard this? Yes, word? I have. Go 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 ahead. Remind me. If I recall correctly, there there are algorithms that decide on the paroling of prisoners and or you know whether people get mortgages and there's some evidence i could be making a, 
a bit of a hash of this, but there was some evidence in, in one or both of these categories that the AI was taking racial characteristics into its calculation. And then that wasn't, that hadn't been programmed in, that was just an emergent property of it finding, of all the data available, this data was, was relevant. In the case of prisoners, the, the recidivism rate, you know, if it's just a fact that black parolees recidivate more, right. reoffend more, I don't know in fact that it is, but let's just say that it is, and an AI notices that, well then of course the AI, if you're going to be predicting whether a person is likely to violate their parole, you are going to take race into account if it's actually descriptively true of the data, that it's a variable. And so I think there, there was at least one story I saw where you had people scandalized by, by racist AI. When I was, was young and very nerdy, more nerdy than I am now, I like gobbled up all science fiction. And Isaac Asimov had a tremendous influence on me. And he uh, had all of his work on robots. And he had these three laws of robotics. And, and, you know, if you think about it as a, you know, from a more sophisticated view, the laws of robotics weren't particularly morally coherent. Like one of them is you should never uh, harm a human or through an action allow a human to come to harm. But does that mean a robot's going to run around trying to save people's lives all the time because we're, for, we're continually not allowing people to come to harm? But, hmm. but the spirit of the endeavor is right, which is... I would wire up, I think, and in fact, I think in some way, as, as robots and I become more powerful, you could imagine becoming compulsory to wire up these machines with some morality. This comes up with driving cars. Sorry, with, yeah, the, yeah. with automatic, right? The, the, the computer-driven cars where, you know, are they going to be utilitarian? Are they going to have principles? And there's a lot of good debates on that, but they have to be something. And they have to have some consistent moral principles that take into account human life and human flourishing. And the last thing you want to stick in there is, is something that says, well, if someone is adorable, care for them more. Always count a single life as more than 100 lives. There's no justification for putting the sort of stupidities of empathy that we're often stuck with to putting them into the machines that we create. That's one thing I love about this moment of having to think about super intelligent AIs. It's amazingly clarifying of moral priorities. I mean, all these people who until yesterday said, well, you know, who's to say what's true in the moral sphere? Once you force them to weigh in on how should we program the algorithm for self-driving cars, they immediately see that, okay, you have to solve these problems one way or another. These cars will be driving. Do you want them to be racist cars? Do you want them to preferentially drive over old people as opposed to children? what makes sense. And to say that there is no norm there to be followed is to just, you're going to be designing one by accident then, right? If you make a car that is totally unbiased with respect to the lives it saves, well, then you've made this kind of this Buddhist car, right? You've made this, you've made the Matthew Ricard car, say, that may be the right answer, but you have taken a position just by default. And, and the moment you begin to design away from that kind of pure equality, you are forced to make moral decisions. And I think it's, it's pretty clear that we have trolley problems that we have to solve. And we have, at a minimum, we have to admit that killing one person is better than killing five. And we have to design our cars to, to have that preference. When you put morality in the hands of the engineers, you see that you can't take refuge in, in any kind of moral relativism. You actually have to answer these questions for yourself. I, I, I envision this future where, you know, you walk into a car dealership and you order one of these cars and you're sitting back and you're paying for it. And then you're asked, what kind of setting do you want? Do you want racist, Buddhist, uh, radical feminist, religious fundamentalist? I don't know if you've heard this research, but when they ask people what the cars should do on, on the question of you know, how biased should it be to save the driver over the pedestrian, say? So if it's a choice between avoiding a pedestrian and killing the driver or killing the pedestrian, how should the car decide? Most people say in the abstract, it should just be unbiased. You should be indifferent between those two. But when you ask people, would you buy a car that was indifferent between your, the driver's life and the, and the pedestrians, they say no. They want, they want a car that's going to protect their lives. So it's hard to adhere to the thing you think is the right answer, it seems. And there, I actually don't know how you solve that problem. I think probably the best solution is 
to not advertise how you've solved it. That's interesting. Right? Yeah. I think if you make it totally transparent, it will be a barrier to the adoption of technology that will be on balance immensely life saving for everyone, you know, dr- drivers and pedestrians included. We now have tens of thousands of people every year reliably being killed by cars. We could bring that down by a factor of 10 or 100. And then the, the deaths that would remain would still be these tragedies that we would have to think long and hard about whether the algorithm performed the way we want it to. But still, that we, we have to adopt this technology as quickly as, as is feasible. So I, I think transparency here could be a bad idea. I think it's true. I mean, I, I find it. I, I know people who have insisted they would never go into a self-driving car. Um, and I find this bizarre because the, the alternative is far more dangerous. But but you're right. And I think there's also this fear of new technology where um, where there'll be a reluctance to use them. Apparently, there was a reluctance to use elevators <laughs> that didn't right. have an elevator operator for right. a long time. So they had to have some schnooks stand there yeah. in order so people would feel calm enough to go inside that. That's um, hilarious. But, 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 but I agree with the general point, which is, is a more general one, which is there's no opting out of moral choices. Um, failing to make a moral choice over, say, giving to charity or what your car should do is itself a moral choice yeah. and, uh, and, and, and driven by a moral philosophy. Um, I also just can't resist adding, and I think this is from the Very Bad Wizards uh, group, but you can imagine a car that had a certain morality and then you got into it and it automatically drove you to like Oxfam and refuse to let you move right. until you gave them a lot of money. Yeah. So you really, you don't want too moral a car. You want a car sort of just moral enough to do your bidding, uh, but not, not much more.